Dhanamat Pranam Namaste All glories to Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Canto 1 Creation Chapter 9 Text 26 Continued <clears throat> The Chatriya, the member of the administrative class, is especially advised to give charity and not to accept charity in any circumstances. Modern administrators raise subscriptions for some political functions, but never give charity to the citizens in any state function. It is just the reverse in the injunctions of the Shastras. The administrative class must be well versed in the Shastras, but must not take to the profession of teachers. The administrators should never pretend to become nonviolent and thereby go to hell. When Arjuna wanted to become not, uh, when Arjuna wanted to become a non-violent coward on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he was severely chastised by Lord Krishna. The Lord degraded Arjuna at that time to the status of an uncivilized man for his avowed acceptance of the cult of non-violence. The administrative class must be personally trained in military education. Cowards should not be evaluated to the presidential throne by dint of numerical votes only. The monarchs were all chivalrous personalities, and therefore monarchy should be maintained provided the monarch is regularly trained in the occupational duties of a king. In fighting, the king or the president should never return home without being hurt by the enemy. <clears throat> the so-called king of today never visits the war field. He is very much expert in artificially encouraging the fighting strength in the hope of false national prestige. As soon as the administrative class is turned into a gang of mercantile and laborer men, the whole machinery of government becomes polluted. The Vaishyas, the members of the mercantile communities, are especially advised to protect the cows. Cow protection means increasing the milk productions, namely curd and butter. Agriculture and distribution of the foodstuff are the primary duties of the mercantile community backed by education and Vedic knowledge, and trained to give in charity. As the Chatriyas were given charge of the protection of the citizens, Vaishyas were given the charge of the protection of animals. Animals are never meant to be killed. Killing of animals is a symptom of barbarian society. For a human being, agricultural produce, fruits, and milk are sufficient and compatible foodstuffs. The human society should not give more attention to animal protection. I'm sorry, the human society should give more attention to animal protection. The productive energy of the laborer is misused when he is occupied by industrial enterprises. Industry of various types cannot produce the essential needs of man, namely rice, wheat, grains, milk, fruits, and vegetables. The production of machines and the machine tools increases the artificial living fashion of the class of vested interests and keeps thousands of men in starvation and unrest. This should not be the standard of, civil of civilization. The Sudra class is less intelligent and should have no independence. They are meant for rendering sincere service to the three higher sections of society. The Sudra class can attain all comforts of life simply by rendering service to the higher classes. It is especially enjoined that a Sudra should never bank money. As soon as the Sudras accumulate wealth, it will be misused for sinful activities in wine, women, and gambling. Wine, women, and gambling indicate that the population is degraded to less than Sudra quality. The higher castes should always look after the maintenance of the Sudras and they should provide them with old and used garments. A sudra should not leave his master when the master is old and invalid, and the master should keep the servants satisfied in all respects. The sudras must first of all be satisfied by sumptuous food and clothing before any sacrifice is performed. In this age so many functions are held by spending millions, but the poor laborer is not sumptuously fed or given charity, clothing, etc. The laborers are thus dissatisfied, and so they make agitation. The Varnas are, so to speak, classifications of different occupations, and ashram dharma is gradual progress on the path of self-realization. Both are interrelated, and one is dependent on the other. The main purpose of this ashram dharma is to awaken knowledge and detachment. 
The Brahmachari Ashram is a training ground for the prospective candidates. In this ashram, it is instructed that this material world is not actually the home of the living entity. The conditioned souls under material bondage are prisoners of matter, and therefore self-realization is the ultimate aim of life. The whole system of ashram dharma is a means to detachment. One who fails to assimilate this spirit of detachment is allowed to enter into family life with the same spirit of detachment. Therefore, one who attains detachment may at once adopt the fourth order, namely renounced, and thus live on charity only, not to accumulate wealth, but just to keep body and soul together for ultimate realization. Household life is for one who is attached, and the Van Prasta and Sannyas orders of life are for those who are detached from material life. The Brahmachari Ashram is especially meant for training both and it, uh, for training both the attached and detached. Text 27. Tanha Dharman Raja Dharman Moksha Dharman Vibhagasha Stri Dharman Bhagavad Dharman Samasavyasa Yogata He then explained by divisions acts of charity the pragmatic activities of a king and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees, both briefly and extensively. Purport To give charity is one of the householder's main functions, and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard-earned money. A brahmachari or student should perform sacrifices, a householder should give charity, and a person in their retired life or in the renounced order should practice penances and austerities. Those are the general functions of all the ashrams or orders of life on the path of self-realization. In the brahmachari life the training is sufficiently imparted so that one may understand that the world as property belongs to the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead. No one, therefore, can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world. Therefore, in the life of a householder, which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment, one must give in charity for the service of the Lord. Everyone's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the Lord. Therefore, the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the Lord in the shape of transcendental loving service for Him. As the rivers draw water from the sea through the clouds and again go down to the sea, Similarly, our energy is borrowed from the Supreme Source, the Lord's energy, and it must return to the Lord. That is the perfection of our energy. The Lord, therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita 9.27, says that whatever we do, whatever we undergo as penance, whatever we sacrifice, whatever we eat, or whatever we give in charity, must be offered to Him, the Lord. That is the way of utilizing our borrowed energy. When our energy is utilized in that way, our energy is purified from the contamination of material inebrieties, and thus we become fit for our original natural life of service to the Lord. Raja Dharma is a great science. Unlike modern diplomacy for political supremacy, the kings were trained systematically to become munificent and not merely to be tax collectors. They were trained to perform different sacrifices only for the prosperity of the subjects. To lead the prajas to the attainment of salvation was a great duty of the king. The father, the spiritual master, and the king are not to become irresponsible in the matter of leading their subjects to the path of ultimate liberation from birth, death, diseases, and old age. When these primary duties are properly discharged, there is no need of government of the people, by the people. In modern days, the people in general occupy the administration by the strength of manipulated votes, but they are never trained in the primary duties of the king, and that is also not possible for everyone. Under the circumstances, the untrained administrators play havoc to make the subjects happy in all respects. On the other hand, these untrained administrators gradually become rogues and thieves and increase the taxation to finance a top-heavy administration that is useless for all purposes. Actually, the qualified brahmanas are meant to give direction to the kings for proper administration in terms of the scriptures like the Manu Samhita and the Dharma Shastras of Parasara. A typical king is the ideal of the people in general, and if the king is pious, sensu uh, 
if the king is pious, religious, chivalrous, and munificent, the citizens generally follow him. Such a king is not a lazy, sensuous person living at the cost of the subjects, but alert always to kill thieves and dacoits. The pious kings were not merciful to dacoits and thieves in the name of nonsensical ahimsa. The thieves and dacoits were punished in an exemplary way so that in the future no one would dare commit such nuisances in an organized form. Such thieves and dacoits were never meant for the administration as they are now. The taxation law was simple. There was no force, no encroachment. The king had a right to take one-fourth of the production made by the subject. The king had a right to claim a fourth of one's allotted wealth. One would never grudge parting with it because due to the pious king and religious harmony there was enough natural wealth, namely grains, fruits, flowers, silk, cotton, milk, jewels, minerals, etc., and therefore no one was materially unhappy. The citizens were rich in agriculture and animal husbandry, and therefore they had enough grains and fruits and milk without any artificial needs of soaps and toilets, cinemas and bars. The king had to see that the reserved energy of humanity was properly utilized. Human energy is meant not exactly for fulfilling animal propensities, but for self-realization. The whole government was specifically designed to fulfill this particular purpose. As such, the king had to select properly the cabinet ministers, but not on the strength of voting background. The ministers, the military commanders, and even the ordinary soldiers were all selected by personal qualification, and the king had to supervise them properly before they were appointed to their respective posts. The king was especially vigilant to see that the tapasvis, or persons who sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge, were never disregarded. The king knew well that the Supreme Personality of Godhead never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees. Such tap tapavis were trusted leaders, even of the rogues and thieves, who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis. The king would give special protection to illiterates, the helpless, and widows of the state. Defense measures were arranged previous to any attack by the enemies. The taxing process was easy and it was not meant for squ uh, squandering, but was for strengthening the reserve fund. The soldiers were recruited from all parts of the world, and they were trained for special duties. As far as salvation is concerned, one has to conquer the principles of lust, anger, unlawful desires, avarice, and bewilderment. To get freedom from anger, one should learn how to forgive. To be free from unlawful desires, one should not make plans. By spiritual culture one is able to conquer sleep. By tolerance only can one conquer desires and avarice. Disturbances from various diseases can be avoided by regulated diets. By self-control one can be free from false hopes and money can be saved by avoiding undesirable association. By practice of yoga one can control hunger and worldliness can be avoided by culturing the knowledge of impermanence. Dizziness can be conquered by rising up and false arguments can be conquered by factual ascertainment. Talkativeness can be avoided by gravity and silence, and by prowess one can avoid fearfulness. Perfect knowledge can be obtained by self-cultivation. One must be free from lust, avarice, anger, dreaming, etc., to actually attain the path of salvation. As far as the women class is concerned, are concerned, they are accepted as a power of inspiration for men. As such, women are more powerful than men. Mighty Julius Caesar was controlled by Cleopatra. Such powerful women are controlled by shyness. Therefore, shyness is important for the women. Once this control valve is loosened, women can create havoc in society by adultery. Adultery means production of unwanted children known as Varna Shankara, who disturb the world. The last item taught by Bhisma Dev was the process of pleasing the Lord. We are all eternal servants of the Lord, and when we forget this essential part of our nature, we are put into material conditions of life. The simple process of pleasing the Lord, for the, house, for the householders especially, is to install the deity of the Lord at home. By concentrating on the deity, one may progressively go on with the daily routine work. Worshipping the deity at home, serving the devotee, 
hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in a holy place, and chanting the holy name of the Lord, are all inexpensive items by which one can please the Lord. Thus they subject thus the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren. And thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text twenty eight on Wednesday. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Shripad Bhakti Madhavapuri Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Srila Bhakti Nirmala Charja Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. All glories to Om Vishnu Pad Srila AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Our glories to Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Rakshak, Sri Dev Goswami Maharaj, Ki Jai. Our glories to the assembled devotees, Ki Jai. Our glories to the worldwide devotees, Ki Jai. Jai Sri Pad Bhakti Niskam Shanta Maharaj, Ki Jai. Jai Sri Pad Bhakti Vigyan Muni Maharaj, Ki Jai. Jai Navadweep Dam, Ki Jai. Jai Mayapur Dam, Ki Jai. Jai Nashingapali Dam, Ki Jai. Jai Ekachakra Dham Ki Jai Jai Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Jai Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dham Ki Jai Sham Kund Radha Kund Ki Jai Tosa Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai Nitai Gora Hari 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 Bol